Welcome to our presentation by Exact Education. The purpose of this video, part one of two, is to explain the use of circuit simulation and how we may compare virtual circuit analysis with measurements from the equivalent physical circuit. The circuit we will analyze in this case is a passive low pass RC filter circuit. This circuit is designed to reject unwanted high frequency components of an electrical signal. It is a relatively simple circuit. It's a voltage divider with two components, a resistor and a capacitor. Signal generator driving the circuit 4 volt peak sine wave of 500 hertz. The advantages of circuit simulation are to assist the learning process by reducing circuit build time. Students can gain an intuitive grasp of circuit behavior before they do the circuit build. We can explore ideas of circuit theory, circuit design quickly and safely. No components and no equipment is going to be damaged. We can alter circuit or component values very quickly and analyze the effects on performance. We can fine-tune de designs and fine-tune performance much quicker uh, in the virtual world than in the physical. The downsides are it may be difficult to analyze, for example, power dissipation in components. For example, a resistor converts electricity to heat. It does not store energy, it converts energy. If there's too high a current going through a resistor in the physical world, it can burn out. These effects are not normally shown in circuit simulators and on the online version of multi-sim. Other than measuring currents and voltages and doing your own calculation, power dissipation is not going to be shown up directly. The other issue may be the accuracy of component models. In this case, we're using simple components, a resistor and a capacitor. And what we are going to do is to simulate the circuit, look at the voltage come going in, look at the voltage coming out, compare amplitudes, and compare phase shift between waveforms, and compare those values against circuit theory. If you want to change component values, for example this resistor value, we double click on the left hand key of the mouse and just plug in whatever value we want in there. Very simple thing to do. So you can very quickly change component values, rerun the simulator and work out the effects of particular component values. In this case, we've set up our test setup for 180 ohms, 2.2 microfarad capacitor, 4 volt peak, 500 hertz, 8 sine wave driving the circuit. Simulators need a ground reference, otherwise they may not simulate consistently. If we want to simulate the circuit and view waveforms coming out, we put multi-sim into interactive mode and we run the simulator. If we want to look at the waveforms, we go into grapher and we look at the waveforms coming out. If we want to do some measurement, we'll just stop the simulation. What we want to do at the moment is we want to look at the voltages coming out. So we have a cursor here that we're going to put on to measure the peak value on the vertical direction, the peak value of V1, Vn, and we're going to put the other cursor on to the peak value of the waveform coming out, which is V out. And what we can see at the bottom here is we have 4.00 volt peak going in so that, that uh, we've got the cursor as accurately as possible on the peak. We've got the second cursor on V out and if we do a measurement we can see that 
what we've got coming out from the simulator and based on our eyesight and based on where we think the peak is, we do a measurement, then say it's there, what we're getting out is a peak value coming out of 2.506 volts. If we want to look at phase shift, we need to go on to the x-axis and what we will do in order to get the most accurate measurement as possible, we will see if we can, we'll do a measurement here. So what we're doing is we're looking for the, when Vn crosses the zero axis, so we're looking for as close to a value, close to zero as we could possibly get on V on the input. So we'll leave that one there, which is 17 millivolts. We will move the cursor on V out and we will nearest to zero we can get is 10 millivolts. If we get a difference here, We've got a difference between those cursors of 284.92 microseconds. From that time difference, we can work out what the phase shift is in angle. We can see that our V out waveform leads V in by a particular angle. So it leads the input voltage because we have a capacitive circuit at high frequencies, step changes, capacitors tend to a uh, short circuit and at very low frequencies, capacitors tend to an open circuit. If we take our time period for one cycle at 500 hertz, is going to be 2 milliseconds. If we take our time difference here of 284.92 and we multiply that as a fraction of the time period which is 2 milliseconds. So 2 milliseconds represents 360 degrees rotation. So if we take a fraction of 284.92, divide that by our 2000 milliseconds for one rotation, multiply that answer by 360, we get a phase shift of 51.29 degrees. How does that match up with our expected values from circuit theory? Circuit theory, if you do the calculations on the voltage divider, where the V out will be the value of Xc divided by Z, where Z is the circuit impedance and Xc is the impedance, the opposition to current flow of the capacitor. The calculations come out to be that the circuit gain should be a factor of 0 0.627 at 500 hertz, which means that the expected peak value of V out would be 2.51. The expected phase shift from the theory calculation would be 51.21 degrees. So what we can gain from that is that we have 2.506 voltage coming out. We expect 2.51 from our circuit theory. So within a very small margin of error, those the voltage, the expected voltage out matches up very accurately. We expect a phase shift from theory of 51.207 degrees. And what we have coming out is 51.27 degrees. 
So again, those values match up very accurately. If we if we zoomed in in terms of time scales in the horizontal direction, and we may get this figure more accurate. And again, it's to some extent it depends on how good your eyesight is as well. But those figures do match up accurately with the results that we get from theory. So that would indicate that the models in multi-sim do match the expected values from circuit theory. If we want to see how this circuit operates over a wide range of frequencies, we can put multi-sim into AC sweep mode and we can rerun it and in this case we will the simulator will plot a graph of gain versus frequency. In this graph here we can see that the vertical is plotted in log scale so what we can see here is when we have a phase shift of 45 degrees then we are at what's called the minus 3 dB point which is the cutoff point for having constant gain. So at this minus 3 dB, D, 3 dB point where we have a value of XC will match the value of resistance of 180 ohms. The output signal will be attenuated to 0.707 of the input signal. And the phase shift will be 45 degrees. So if we look for a phase shift of 40, minus 45 degrees, we get to that point there. And it would appear to be approximately 400 hertz. If we zoom in, so we don't have a wide range of frequency sweep, we put in 1 megahertz and see if we can zoom in a bit. What we're looking for is a phase shift of minus 45 degrees. And again, the closest nut value we can get in here with the resolution would be 398 hertz. If you do the calculations, then the 3 dB cutoff point will calculate to come out to be 401.9 hertz. So again, within reason and within resolution, the simulator is matching up with the expected results from circuit theory. Thank you for watching. And I hope that has been informative on how to use multisim.